these places. That's not about the benefit, we're talking about the environment, economic activity, transportation, health. Let me just give you an example, health. Is this what the future looks like? You know, the issue of obesity is something that has a lot of implications, heart attacks, respiratory problems, depression, anxiety. And some of you might say, oh, no, no, we're not the US, that one out of three are obese. No, but you are one out of six and getting worse. And you can lead the world in having the healthiest population, working on two sides of the balance, calories in, calories out. So we're gonna improve the school lunches. We're also gonna have farmers market all, all over the city. And we're gonna have gardens in the parks so that the children and the, and the citizens, they, they realize that the vegetables don't come out of a factory, but are actually grown. And at the same time, we're gonna be physically active. Just 30 minutes a day for adults, 60 minutes a day for children. Physical activity is good for so many things, and no better place to do it than in the parks. But we know that in the parks and the green spaces and so on, we're gonna improve physical health. But let's keep in mind that there is no health without mental health. So it's not just about physical health. There is no health without mental health. For example, depression is the world leading cause of disability today. And if we have contact with nature, we're gonna improve the cognitive attention. So we're gonna have access to that contact with nature near everybody's homes. That is something that is absolutely critical. If our neighborhoods have more green spaces, those neighborhoods with more green space are gonna lower the depression, the anxiety, the stress. That's why having trees and having green areas and all of this is also so important. It's not only because it's good for the economy, it's good for health, it's good in so many ways. So I want to just close by saying, how do we want to live? Let's think outside the box. You have such a magnificent opportunity. Of course, Finland within the world stage is good. But the, the, the better that you get, the more that you can be an example to other people. And the better quality of life that you're going to have to run the cities. These are not technical issues. These are not financial. This is political in a big sense. That's why I put a big P. It's about we, everybody has to participate. We need to create broad alliances. We need to have, gotta have alliances. We gotta invite elected officials at the city level, at the national level. We gotta have people in the public sector, but do alliances, not just the parks people. Invite public health, invite education, finance. Get everybody aligned. And also invite the community. It's like a three-legged stool. The elected officials, the public sector, and the community. Community, invite the university, the active, the media, everybody. And how do you get all of these three working together? What is the glue for them to work together? We need to develop a sense of urgency and a shared vision. Every one of you that works in parks, in green areas, when people are making decisions on anything, whether they're gonna do the parks, what is the budget? How much money are they gonna sign for trees, for green areas? You're gonna be at the table. Because if you're not at the table, you're gonna be on the menu. And you don't, you don't wanna be on the menu, but then you're gonna say, oh, where is the money for more trees? Did you go to the meeting? No, you were on the menu. Where is the park? Oh, they're gonna build a, a house in, in that park. Did you go to the meeting? No. So we gotta be present. We gotta move from talking to doing. I know that there's a lot of doing, but we gotta do more, and we gotta do it faster. As we move forward to create vibrant cities and healthy communities where all people are going to live happily. I wish you much success. Thank you very much.